Okay, so are you ready for these related rate problems? I think so, but just to be sure, let's, let's do some warm-ups first. Uh, a equals pi r squared, and we're assuming r is a differentiable function of t. Then do you know the difference between dA dr and dA dt? dA dr is just 2 pi r, because the derivative of what's inside is 1. But dA dt, by the chain rule, when you take the derivative of what's inside, you get a dr dt there. Here's a similar problem. Assu again, we're assuming r is a differentiable function of t. You know the difference between dv dr and dv dt? When you take the derivative of what's inside on the left, derivative of r is just 1, so you just get the surface area, 4 pi r squared. But when you take the derivative of what's inside here, you get a dr dt, so it's 4 pi r squared dr dt. Same thing here. Uh, do you know the difference between dy dx and dy dt? dy dx is just 2 minus 2x, but dy dt, you, you have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside with respect to t by the chain rule. That's why you get the dx dt on there. Now this last one I, I think is the most important one for what we're going to talk about in this section. Um, here we're assuming x and y are both differentiable functions of t. So um, for the first one, when you differentiate with respect to x, uh, you get 2x times 1 plus 2y dy dx, which is y prime, equals 0. So when you solve for y prime, you get negative x over y. On the second one, however, when you differentiate both sides with respect to t, what's the derivative of x squared with respect to t? You get 2x times dx dt. Same is true with the y squared. You get 2y times dy dt equals 0. So when you solve for dy dt on this last one, you get negative x over y times dx dt. Okay, so with these related rate problems, we're always going to be differentiating with respect to t. Um, and my advice is, learn the basic types. There's only about five of them, and what I'm going to do right now is, is lead you through the five basic types. And so when you do the homework, try to relate the homework problems to these five examples I'm going to show you now. Also, follow the procedure I'm going to show you also. If you do it, if you follow the procedure, you'll find it's not that bad, really. This first example is called the ladder problem. Um, in this case, we have a 10-foot ladder, and uh, you're pulling the bottom of the ladder away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second. The question is how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the, when the base of the ladder is eight feet from the wall. Okay, well, the first step we're going to do in all these problems is draw a picture and label the relevant quantities. Let's call x the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall. Let's call y the distance from the top of the ladder to the ground. Second step, state what's given and what they want you to find. Here they're giving you that x is increasing. So dx dt is 1, positive 1, and, and they want you to find dy dt when x equals 8. So this next step is the key. You, you need to write an equation that relates the variables in, 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 the, in the rates here. What is the equation that relates x and y? Can you see from the picture? That's right, it's the Pythagorean theorem. And now what we're going to do is differentiate with respect to t, both sides. Remember, the derivative of the left side with, with respect to t becomes 2x times dx dt plus 2y dy dt, and on the right side you get 0. Uh, remember what we're trying to do? We're trying to find dy dt. So if you solve this last equation for dy dt, you end up with dy dt is negative x over y times dx dt. And the last step here um, is important because you want to find dy dt when x equals 8. So what you need to do is you need to go back to the original picture and replace x with 8 and then you can, you can find y at that instant by using the Pythagorean theorem. And all you have to do is plug everything in. Uh, you plug in uh, negative x over y times dx dt, you simplify it and you get negative 4 thirds foot feet per second. All right, let's, let's keep on going. So, so I would call that first example uh, a Pythagorean theorem type problem. Let's, let's move on now. Uh, this one, uh, you have a balloon that's being blown up, spherical balloon, and they're giving you the radius is changing at 3 centimeters per second. That's the derivative with respect to t. At what rate is the volume changing when the radius is 10? So they want you to find dv dt when r equals 10. First step, draw a picture. Not much to draw here. 
Uh, you're given the RDT equals 3, and they want you to find the VDT when R equals 10. That's the second step. Third step is the key, remember. You want to find an equation that relates these two variables, R and V, and it, it turns out in this case it's the volume of the sphere. Next step, differentiate both sides with respect to T. You get uh, dV dt equals 4 pi r squared times the r dt. And then all you have to do now is, is plug in r equal 10. When you, when you plug that in, you get 1200 pi cubic centimeters per second. I would call this second type of problem an example of a um, geometric formula type problem. All right, let's move on. Uh, here we have a cone that has height 10 inches and radius 2 inches. It's being filled with water at a constant rate of 2 cubic inches per second. So that's dV dt. The question is how fast uh, is the water level rising when the depth is 6 inches? Okay, draw a picture. Uh, don't get the volume of the cone mixed up with the volume of the water. Right? The, the volume of the water changes. Uh, but the volume of the cone, uh, this is always 2, this is always 10. Anyway, they're giving you uh, that dV dt is 2, and they want you to find dH uh, dt when uh, h equals 6. Okay, well, uh, you might not re remember this, but the formula for the volume of a cone turns out to be v equals 1 third pi r squared h. And we have a problem here. Remember, we're trying to find an equation that relates the var variables in what's given what they want you to find. Well, there's no R. There's R in the formula, but there, there's no dr dt anywhere. So what we're going to have to do is be clever. We're going to have to eliminate R from this equation. And the way we do it is with a technique called similar triangles. Do you notice that this big triangle is similar to this small one? So there's, there's lots of things you could say. One thing you could say is that H is to R. This side is to this side, as this long side, which is 10, is to this long side, too. So that, that'll work. Remember, we're trying to get rid of R cross multiply. 10R equals 2H. So R turns out to be H over 5. So you can march back over to this equation here uh, for the volume, and you can replace R with H over 5. And when you multiply it out, you get pi H cubed over 75. Differentiate both sides with respect to T. And uh, you get you get that uh, dV dt equals 3 pi h squared over 75 times the h dt. Now what are we trying to do again? We're trying to solve for the h dt here. So we, we, to solve for the h dt, you're going to uh, multiply by the reciprocal here. Now you have to plug in h equals 6 in, into this equation. When you plug h equals 6 in and simplify, you get 25 over 18 pi inches per second. Okay, I think we have time for one more. So that last example I would call uh, a similar triangle type, since we use similar triangles. This last one isn't too bad. Uh, points moving along this curve, y equals square root of x squared plus 1, uh, in such a way that the x coordinate is increasing by 4 units per second, so that's a derivative with respect to time. That's dx dt. And they want to know how fast is the y coordinate changing when x equals 3. So the picture looks kind of like this. The points moving along this function here. So they're giving us dx dt is 4, and they want us to find dy dt when x equals 3. So what we need to do is find a relationship between x and y. Do you know what it is? Do you know what the relationship is between x and y? Why, it's the equation itself. Remember the points lying on this curve. So the equation itself is, is what provides the relationship between x and y. So we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. And when you do that, you get... Um, 1 half x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half times 2x times the derivative of what's inside. And when you plug in x equal 3 and you plug in 4 for dx dt, you end up with uh, 12 over 10 units per second. Okay, so what we've done is we've looked at four basic types of related rate problems. The latter problem was an example of the Pythagorean theorem type. The um, spherical balloon being inflated was an example of the geometric formula type. The um, cone problem was an example of a similar triangle, and the last one we did was an example of point on the curve. So in, in part two, we're going to look at the fifth type of related rate problem, and we'll also look at a, several other examples. See you then.